Hey, what's up, YouTube? I got a special video for you today. Um, I met somebody here over the last week. He's from Washington, D.C. He's a network engineer with over 16 years experience. And so in this video, I'm going to let him talk about his background and just kind of help out the newcomers, those that are in the field, and those that are a little more advanced in the field. So let's get a crack. What's up, man? What's up, everyone? Chilling. How you doing, man? I'm good. Pleasure to be here. That's what's up. Glad you're here, man. Thanks for coming. So I want to um, if you I want to know if you can let the people know you know about you, about um, your experience and all that good stuff. Okay. Hello everyone. My name is William Roberts. I'm a network engineer, among other things. Been in the field for 16 years. Have a number of certifications in the field. Uh, and have a vast range of knowledge on all things IT and network uh, security. That's what's up. That's what's up. 16 years experience. 16 years experience. What got you in the field? Uh, what originally got me field, got in the field was uh, my time in the military. Okay. Uh, I was in the military for 16 and a half years, uh, and I came into the military after uh, leaving college after a year. Um, once I got in the military, I decided I wanted to be an IT security professional. That's what's up. Uh, I was able to learn a number of skills and trades uh, throughout that time that uh, honed my skills and created the seasoned veteran I am now. Particularly, it was network security, doing routing, switching, uh, enterprise domain control, different pieces uh, for different layers of the network. Okay, man, that's that's a big deal, huh? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's a huge thing, especially now with uh, security being a big piece. Uh, just the arrangement of your your WANs, NANs, and uh, local area networks. So during that time, with all your experience. Did you achieve any certifications? Yeah, I sure did. I uh, achieved the uh, industry standard ones for network, and I have my CCNP, uh, CISSP, uh, the PNP for project management. As I uh, moved from levels of being a technician, I also managed those same projects from a uh, project manager standpoint, overseeing uh, network creation and design, implementation of various cities. That's what's up. So if you could go back and do it all over again, I know you said you had one year of college at the time mm -hmm. before you got into the military and did the networking. Would you recommend somebody that's getting into the field to go directly into getting certifications or going to college first in today's um, market? Uh, well, I'd say in today's market uh, that you have to kind of know yourself. Right? Yes, sir. If you want to go ahead and plan out what you want to do, see it from the end point to the beginning, and that way you can kind of create a roadmap of things that you need to do, should do, things that you need to consider. Uh, it can go either way, as long as you consider yourself. For some people, I'd say go to college, have that structured environment, uh, traditional route of schooling, and then job force. Uh, right. But then for others, I'd say, hey, why don't you look at doing some of the OJT, you know, doing, uh, overshadowing or shadowing people, learning those skills and trades, and doing the certifications as you've uh, earned that, learned that experience. Uh, so it, it works for different people, different methods, different work, uh, different, different ways. So you really just have to know what's best for you, what's best for your learning style. Right. And go for it. Yeah, one of the things I like to tell people um, on my channel is that you may be faced with an opportunity of one job that pays more money and another job that does not pay as much, but you learn a lot, a lot more. How do you feel about situations like that? Uh, so that's also a situational based, uh, I guess, answer I have to give. It really depends on where you're at, uh, what you're trying to achieve, and that's why you want to create a roadmap right. of, of where you are now and where you want to be, and then those actions in the middle will dictate, uh, help to dictate and direct where you go in the future. Um, you know, you can look and say the money, take the money now, or get the money later. Um, always know that you can change in life, nothing is forever, uh, so either route is good. Your circumstances call for money right now. Um, right. Look at the disadvantages, because the advantage may be the money, but there's definitely some disadvantage, or it may be. Uh, but there's also pros and cons, and that disadvantage to taking the lesser road of less money, but it has more experience you can gain, and there may be some other benefits to it. Um, so it's one of those you have to determine where you are and where you want to be, yes, sir. Uh, and also sacrifices that may need to be I agree. I agree. So, um, with the way technology is changing with uh, software-defined networks and um, Active Directory coding and everything involved with the cloud, 
Would you recommend somebody getting into network? What field or what's your what's your advice to someone that's looking to get into IT? Gotcha. Uh, so yeah, the, the advent of all these new technologies and ideologies, methodologies, uh, kind of changes the game some. Uh, I'm a traditionalist, so I'm old school and thought of going with the things that are fundamental yes. and that are backbone. So I would say networking. Right. I would say hard line networking. Uh, you can look at wireless technologies and some of the software implementations of network stuff, you know, virtual pieces, but go with what's always going to be there. Go with what's traditional because you won't outlive that. That won't go away. Um, and that actually is a fundamental piece of knowledge that you need to know because all of the newer technologies are based on the old technologies. Right. So it'd be beneficial and it behooves people to learn what came first and then work as soon as so many. Yeah, I agree. Um, a lot of people say MCSA or CCNA. Well, if you get your CCNA, you know all the networking, DNS, OSI model, and everything to get your MCSA. Now you need to learn is pretty much Active Directory and PowerShell. Yeah. That, that's kind of how I feel. Exactly. Yeah, you, you have to know the groundwork. Uh, one thing I always tell people, don't be in a race to try to learn everything. Right. Some of the best people have taken their time, honed their skills, and to shape their craft the right way. Um, today, the way the technology is moving by, uh, it would seem like the best way to go about it is trying to learn everything at a rapid pace. Right. Um, and some can under maybe learn some of it, but you won't grasp the full understanding of it. If you want longevity in this game, you want to have true understanding of different pieces of your toolbox. So take your time, do your roadmap, plan out where you want to go, and work towards it. I totally agree with that because basically, to me, um, there's there's a question on YouTube right now. Um, like, are people smart enough to be in IT? And how do you kind of feel about someone with their um, competency level getting in IT? So I, I, don't, I don't think any field is, anybody's excluded from any field. I think that people uh, sometimes have natural abilities or, or, or naturally gravitate towards one thing or other. They may be more inclined to learn something better or faster than others. Everyone can learn IT. Uh, it's just a lot of time and dedication. And it's a question of how bad do you want it? So, uh, because it's not something that you're born with. It's something that you learn. Especially within this field. So, if you're willing to do what it takes, you've the drive, determination, the time, uh, you can be the same as everyone else and be better. I agree. I agree. So, what you're saying is have patience, precision focus on the craft, and just take your time learning. That's exactly right. Take your time learning. Know that you can't run the next person's race. Which all you can be and should strive to be is the best you that you can be. And so, last question, and I know we kind of varied away from you know the list of questions we had, but this was really a good conversation, and I appreciate you coming. Mm -hmm. So, another question people ask is, what job is going to make me the most money? I know my my viewpoint is um, the most the job any job that's going to make you the most money is somebody that's great at that one thing. So if you're going to be a doctor, a neurosurgeon is going to be make the most money rather than just a general practitioner. And so in the IT field, to me, it's kind of the same thing. What do you think? Uh, true. I would say that's majority, majority right. The majority of the reasoning is right. Uh, you people pay for specialists. People want to know that they have the top person in their field. Yes. Um, but there's also the other thing to look at. It's also another set of variables that go into how one makes money and then also you it's subjective and relative in how much money is a lot of money right right uh, so something to consider is you could be the top of one but only be working just maybe one client or with one company where you may have someone that's maybe not as smart in the same field but has multiple clients or multiple companies uh, so there's a number of variables, there's time and different pricing and stuff like that. But overall, as a general type rule within the industry, specialists, uh, specialists 
in their fields are going to make more of the jack all trades. Man, this was a great interview. I feel like we covered pretty much somebody that's entry level and someone that's more advanced looking to get out there and really um, excel, whether it be in being a consultant or just being someone that makes a lot of money. Yeah. You know, so I really thank you for your time, bro. All right, thank you for having me. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.